Hey fam, it's Kelly here hopping on. Um, in this video, I'm going to continue with the topic of boundaries and I'm going to give some examples of literally these are people in my life who recently have, have just like shown me how they're setting some really healthy boundaries and I thought they were great examples and they're actually kind of in all different realms and I just wanted to kind of show you what it can look like but also after giving these little examples to like point out what these people, what they all have in common, what's really going on energetically and why they have this ease and grace to be able to set a boundary. Um, before we get into that, I just want to say hello. My name is Kelly in case this is your first time here or watching my videos. Um, yeah, my name is Kelly. I am a soul coach for women and I do have a private Facebook group. Um, it's called the sensitive savvy. I would love to have you in it. If you like my content or my energy, you can click the link in my Instagram bio or click on my cover photo for Facebook and it'll get you in there. Um, but yeah, just to kind of get down to it. So some examples of healthy boundaries that my friends and family have been making recently, and I just want to shout out to them and say thank you for being amazing examples. And this is kind of, yeah, this is, it's just feels good to be able to make a video using you all as, as examples of healthy boundaries. Um, so one situation was I was having a conversation with someone and brought up a topic and they just clearly stated to me kindly that that topic was off the table for discussion. And I was like, okay then, now I know. And so sometimes a healthy boundary is that. And I actually, in some of the, um, just today, I was in a highly sensitive uh, Facebook group, uh, which is like a, a, a um, type of person that I would identify as, and many of us do, I know. But she was also saying how, someone in her family kept asking her about financial matters and she was having a hard time saying how that topic for her should be off the table. You know, she didn't want to talk about financial matters with so-and-so and so how to set that boundary. So boundaries can sometimes be, you know, what's on the table and off the table to talk about. Um, another boundary, healthy boundary that recently a friend of mine uh, shared that she made with me was she was getting over like a cold, like an illness, and she was pretty over it, but not totally over it yet. Um, and dance class was coming up, and she likes to go to dance class every week. It's like one of her like movement um, kind of commitments. And she probably could have gone, but she actually chose to stay home and continue to recover and rest. And that was a really good boundary. And that was a really good act of like self-love because sometimes we go to those classes, whether it's, you know, our movement class or our art class or, you know, school, whatever, even if it's just regular school, we go because we want to like be the consistent person, whether that's for us or that's for the instructor or that's for our classmates or our teammates or our dance mates. You know, we like sometimes want to be there or do it for the other people. And it's like, she made a really awesome boundary. And she was like, you know what? I know my body and I know that I could really use another morning just to kind of chill and recover. And she did. And so that was another one. I have two more, well, I have one more and then I have one person who's like uh, figuring it out. So the other healthy boundary was a friend of mine recently got a new job and she is kind of a big deal in this new place of work uh, in charge of many people, like in a supervisor, like really big, mm, in charge of lots of people and responsibility type of position. And it was the holiday party and it so it would have been her first time going to the holiday party at this new place of work in this leadership position people were all talking about the holiday party and actually when the night came she didn't really want to go she just wanted to stay home and you know do her thing with like her dog and watch a movie or whatever um and so she didn't go and she just told her supervisor or her people like, you know, I think I'm just going to sit this one out despite all the hype, despite all the expectations. And she just took the night for herself. And I was like, that's amazing. Good for you. Um, 
So those are some examples of what boundaries can look like. Boundary isn't always like, you know, you're in this total burnout mode and it's like uh, extreme. A boundary, you know, you could be learning boundaries just in like a kind of normal state of life too. Um, the last example I wanted to give is someone who is still, he's still figuring it out, but he shared with me recently that he was like contemplating letting go of this part-time job that he actually doesn't really need. Um, he's just been doing it for a while. And, you know, we were talking and he's like, yeah, you know, Kelly, I'm, I'm building my case for leaving this part-time job that I don't really need. And I looked at him and I was like, he's like, you know, he was trying to get like 10 good reasons why he should leave it. And I like flipped the script and I was just like, friend, can you think of three good reasons why you should stay here? And he really, you know, he was kind of stumped and uh, we kept talking. So it, the you know, he's in it. He's trying to figure out. He feels this inner, like, um, his kind of true self coming through. Like, he wants some freedom or he wants some space. But he also doesn't want to disappoint the people at this place who really love him. He's this lovable human. And he does great work. And he's made a lot of... Um, he's just a big support for this place. But... Um, you know, he's his own person and he wants to go explore the world and see what else is out there. And so he's like in this, you know, he's figuring out how to set this boundary and, you know, either let go of this place of work and go and do his own thing or not. So boundaries can look like different things. Um, but all of these people, what they all have in common, is, and especially the ones who's like, who have already made the decision, but even the one who's still like figuring it out is that, they really are, you know, trying to be true to their like inner selves. You know, these are ba making boundaries is really a, like a sovereign act of self love and a sovereign act of self honoring yourself, you know, honoring yourself, your true self, like what your spirit really wants and what your body really needs. And really listening to that and honoring it time and time again. And so that's why for some of us, I mean, and I went through years of overgiving and not knowing how to say no and feeling awkward and all of the things. Um, a lot of the reason why it's so hard for us to say no is because we haven't uh, tapped in t deep enough to that inner voice, to that inner self, to honor it enough and know that I'm okay if I disappoint someone, you know, and I'm okay if I say no and that person maybe thinks I'm mean or uncool or whatever. Like you start to really tap into your higher self, your true self, your inner voice, and you start to love her or him, uh, you know, more than anything and really, really listen and tap into that. And you start to navigate your life according to that voice. And so what boundary making really is, if you flip it in another light, it's really just listening to your inner voice and aligning with that in each decision and in each moment. Like I've said before, sometimes, like let's say it's a work thing, some days you might feel totally into and energized and ready to stay late and like put in time with the team and like you, you really want to do it. And another day, you might have like had a crappy night's sleep and like forgot your lunch and you really need to go home, eat and go to bed. And so it's not like, um, that's the tricky thing too with boundaries is, you know, it's not just like slap it all down and then it's like laid there. I mean, like you can do that. And, and that I went through a whole series and phase where I was saying no to everything. It was like, <laughs> everything was a no. Um, but what I've realized is boundary making really is navigating and discerning in each moment. And that takes tapping into yourself with each moment and like aligning to your energetic body each moment and each decision. And so how do you get there? I mean, that takes doing the inner work. All of these people, the, you know, these four people who I know who are literally in my like, you know, inner sanctum and circle of life, family and friends. These are people who each in their own way, there's no one way to do this. 
but each in their own way are like exploring inwardly and getting to know like what's inside of them, their true self and like what she or he really wants and like listening to that inner voice. So that's what all of these people have in common and that's why they're able to gracefully be like, you know what, I don't, I'm not really feeling going to that holiday party or you know what, I'm gonna stay and take care of myself tonight and dance class is gonna be okay, you know, or I can say what is off the table and what is not appropriate to talk about in this situation right now or what I'm not ready to talk about in this situation and I can do it gracefully and respectfully, you know, and it is, it's, um, you learn to do it with ease and grace when you start to honor yourself first and really root in a love of yourself. And that the only way you do that is by going inward and like getting to know who you are on the inside, right? So um, yeah, those are some more fun facts about boundary setting. You know, it's not just, um, it's not just like some hardcore, like just start saying no to everything and whatever. It actually becomes like a living discernment and in order to do it kind of uh, gracefully and um, thoughtfully, it actually is like you have to be tuned into your energetic body kind of at all times, like every day, you know? Like sometimes it might be a yes with this person. Sometimes it might be a no with that situation. So um, it, it actually becomes a, a like thoughtful and graceful and easeful thing uh, when you, it's just how you, it just ends up being how you navigate life. You start to just honor yourself and your energy. And that's what I, when I say energetic sovereignty, it's like on my, you know, I say like, you know, guiding women to leading lives of energetic sovereignty. That's what I'm referring to. Women who know and can read their energetic body, meaning their physical body, the energy they have emotionally to give to another or to a situation. They can read that at any given day, at any given hour, and then uh, you know say yes or no, or adjust an answer accordingly. So that's what I mean. It's like, it's a fluid thing, especially as women, we're cyclical, right? So one week, you may have all the energy in the world to like say yes to all the social invitations and going to the dance classes, you know, and all of these things. And then the next week, you actually, might not be able to do any of it, you know, because of where you are in your month. So that's like a whole nother thing when it comes to women and our energy and, and um, nourishing ourselves, loving ourselves and setting boundaries. It's going to fluctuate because we are cyclical beings. <laughs> um, and I do have, if you're in my group, I have a whole video on living according to our cycles. So you can hop into the Sensitive Savvy and, and watch that one too. Um, but yeah, so that's that to all my friends and family who have shared with me recently. And it wasn't because I asked, they were just sharing what was going on in their life. And so I really just honor you for um, sharing that with me. Thank you for being amazing examples of self love and, you know, be allowing me even to share this. I feel like it's like you're all good examples for the world. And I think all of us are are really stepping into that and, and learning that it's okay to give ourselves the permission, you know? That is also ultimately what it is. It's like, actually, I can give myself the permission to stay home and watch a movie. Actually, I can give myself the permission to quit the job and know that if people really love me, they're going to love me whether I'm an employee here or not, you know? Um, you know, giving yourself the permission to you know, skip the dance class and take care of yourself. It's all about you are the authority of your life and your energy. Give yourself the permission to say no and like start standing in that energy. But you got to go inside for it. You got to tap into that higher place of you, your higher self. Um, so if you have questions about that or comments, leave them below or DM me. I am always here. Again, my Facebook group is called The Sensitive Savvy. You can hop on over to it. The link is in the bio. I love connecting with all of you. Thank you for watching and I love you very much. <laughs>